All right, welcome folks. Welcome to our, uh, our presentation here. We're about to get started. Um, you have not missed anything yet. We're just kicking off. We're gonna let um, some time pass here as we allow attendees to enter the room. Welcome you all, welcome, welcome. So welcome to the folks that are just entering our uh, presentation for the day. I want to welcome you all to Cal Poly's first fall webinar. We're excited to get uh, started here in just one minute. We're going to let some folks enter the room and then we'll get started. We have a super exciting uh, presentation in store. We got Cal Poly students here to present on their first year experience and what your first year experience could look like here at Cal Poly. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I know we have folks that are just joining us, so we're just about to get started here. And I, first of all, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Aaron Borgeson. My pronouns are he, his, and him. And I'm originally from Temecula, California. I serve as an admissions officer here at Cal Poly, and I earned my uh, undergraduate degree in political science after coming from Temecula, California. So welcome you all to our visit, our experience, our first fall webinar here. We're gonna get started and meet the panelists in just one minute, but I wanna um, ask, where are you all from? So we're about to launch a poll, and we're curious where you might be joining us from. We are curious uh, what majors that you might even be interested in here from, uh, that you might be interested in at Cal Poly as well. So without further ado, go, welcome to, you're welcome to uh, select the, the different maybe areas, geographical areas that you might be from. This might be areas outside of the state of California. You might be an international student. So welcome to submit any of, uh, of, of where you're coming from here today. We also wanna let you uh, know if there's any maybe council Counselors, maybe a transfer student is joining us or a parent or supporter. And we use at Cal Poly the term first year to typically define your freshman or first year at Cal Poly. That's mostly a student that's coming from high school, but might even, um, oh gosh, it might be even a transfer some student sometimes that might refer to themselves as first year as well. So it looks like most of you are coming in um, from this uh, a, a good portion of the state of California. I like to see a lot of you coming from Southern California as a, as a native Southern California resident myself so that's extremely exciting to see and it's and it's exciting to see a really diverse um, set of majors that you all are interested in from interested at Cal Poly we do have 64 majors at Cal Poly and so some really incredible opportunities and if you joined us uh, at last Saturday's preview day I hope that you got a, a really a cool understanding of so many different opportunities that exist at Cal Poly so without further ado Let's get started. Um, we're, we're in store for about the next 50, 55 minutes to really dive in, um, dive deeper into what life at Cal Poly for a first year student looks like. So I do have a couple of housekeeping items before I introduce the, our students here today. One of those housekeeping items is that the chat is really not gonna be for any questions. The chat might be um, if you need us to slow down or speak up or need to be a uh, little bit louder or whatnot. Um, but really the, the Q&A function is gonna be your best friend. So if you have any questions for the panelists, we should also have a live Q&A at the very end. So if you have any questions about Cal Poly and that first year experience here at Cal Poly, go ahead and use that Q&A function down below that you see on your screen. So use that Q&A function um, if you do have any questions um, uh, uh, for the panelists and we're all of our all of us are here to answer any of those questions we also have some really exciting information to present to you all uh, for some really uh, uh, all about that first year experience so without further ado let's ask our panelists our six students to go ahead and um, uh, turn on their cameras and we're going to start with the poly reps those are our university ambassadors that can introduce themselves and then we're going to go over to Mustang Success Center Career Services and University housing. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the uh, virtual mic on over to our poly reps to introduce themselves. Hi all, my name is Jay Dowds. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am a fourth year sociology major with minors in ethnic studies and women and gender studies. And I'm originally from Long Beach, but currently back in slow right now. And I'm super stoked to have you all with us today. Alrighty, hello everyone. My name is Jen McGregor. My pronouns are she, her, and I am from Walnut 
Creek, California. So all the Northern California folks in the chat, super stoked that you're here. Um, I am a business administration major, double concentrating in accounting and marketing. Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa Tusimer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a second year political science major concentrating in pre-law. Um, so I was just in your shoes about a little over a year ago. Um, got a year under my belt to share with you all my experience. And I'm originally from the Bay, but I'm currently residing in the sunny town of San Luis Obispo. Hi everyone, my name is Mariah. I'm a third year kinesiology major. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm from San Diego, so yes, for Southern California. Um, and I'm in slow for the quarter, so it's been really good so far. Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Horse, pronouns he, him, his. I am a third year construction management major representing career services for today, and I am from the Bay Area, but currently in slow. Hi everyone, my name is Sydney. I am a third year business administration marketing concentration major here at Cal Poly. I'm representing university housing and my hometown is also Temecula, California. Awesome, thank you so much panelists. Uh, we're really excited for uh, all of us, all of these six students to be here to really share that insight into some valuable information about Cal Poly. What we have in store is what happens after you you're conditionally admitted. So if you apply this fall, or maybe potentially in the year's future, in the fall time, you will hear back from Cal Poly, and this is a guarantee from our team in the Office of Admissions that by April 1st, we'll definitely notify you of your decision. But what happens after you say yes to Cal Poly? We follow that national deadline of you to say yes to Cal Poly by or on May 1st. So May 1st is the last day for you to say yes or no if you've been conditionally admitted. But, and what happens after you say yes? We're going to talk about that summer and that, that transition into being a Cal Poly Mustang in the fall. Then we're going to talk about what are those, some of those expectations that you might hold right now as a high school student about your first year in college. We're going to talk about maybe some things that might be a little bit different than some of those myths or some of those um, uh, cultural norms that you might have about your first year at Cal Poly. Then we're going to talk a little bit about university advising. Specifically, we're going to uh, put a spotlight on the Mustang Success Center. And then we're also going to talk about career services, which is a phenomenal team here uh, to talk about um, uh, really all things, uh, 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 finding your passions and really uh, getting to better know who you are as an individual, and then going off and being successful in a career or wherever that life takes you after Cal Poly. But before we do anything, I want to really introduce University Housing. And um, we have Sydney, she, she's an awesome ambassador to University Housing and has a plethora of experience uh, to really share what the housing experience looks like at Cal Poly. So without further ado, Sydney, let's uh, take it away and you're welcome to share more information about university housing here at Cal Poly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so some of my experience includes I'm currently a student assistant for university housing. I've served as an RA as well as um, I was hired as a housing ambassador. I'm off duty right now. Um, so once you uh, get accepted into Cal Poly and you say, yep, that's where I want to go, the next step is to fill out your housing application. And so that's going to be on your uh, Cal Poly portal under University Housing on the left hand side. Um, sorry, I was reading the chat. Um, and so on the left hand side, you're going to fill out your housing application and so things included in the application that are important to note right now is that we do things a little bit differently than some of the other universities we take into consideration you're going to fill out uh, your uh, first, it's an initial payment for, I'm seeing that we have mostly first years. So our first years, it's an initial payment of $500 that uh, goes towards your uh, first month of um, rent, if you will. And then for transfers, uh, there's different rates, but I'll focus on the first year information then. Uh, so you're going to list your preferences for uh, your residential learning communities. So that's how we break down where you're assigned in your dorms. So we have different residential learning communities, for example, the college that you're a part of, if you want to live with students that are in, say, I'm a business student and I want to live with students in the business college, you can sign up for the business 
uh, residential learning community, as well as we have other ones like mindful living in years past that we've done, or we have um, a different list. There's uh, the university housing website breaks down all the different ones that we do have, and it's a great source for more information. Uh, we also have the option for gender inclusive housing. So that would be housing that uh, is all gendered versus um, single gendered housing. We also have the option for lower cost housing. It'll be uh, a box that you check for uh, a preference to receive lower cost housing. So that would put you in normal years, it would put you in a triple uh, or a quad. Because of COVID-19, things are a little bit different. And so we're hoping that things will return back to normal. Um, but we will definitely have more information as that comes out to us. Another thing you can do on your application is you can request roommates uh, depending on the year. You know, this year, University Housing assigned our first years to all their spaces. And uh, it was all single housing, so everyone had their own room, so roommates were not an option. But we tried to keep all the roommates in the same floor or in the same building depending on uh, how you filled out your housing application. And it's just a reminder that these are all preferences. They're not guarantees. Uh, and then we also have added our two-year living requirement for CAFE ma majors, uh, CAD majors, and then athletes and CP scholars. Um, and I just want to reiterate that you can't request a specific building. Instead, everything is grouped by RLCs, which are our residential learning communities. And so awesome. about... Um, awesome. Hey, Sydney, one question. What's CAFES and CAD? Oh, those are majors. Uh, could someone help me out with the abbreviations? Sure. So that's the College of Architecture and Environmental Design as well as the College of Agri Agriculture, Food, and Environmental Sciences. So those two colleges are required to live on campus for two years. Perfect, yes, thank you. And so uh, once, you've, uh, once you're admitted or you've selected that you wanna attend Cal Poly, this uh, housing application appears in your portal 24 to 48 hours after you accepted your offer ad admission. And so usually it, uh, to answer the question about how long it takes to get in, uh, our first years are guaranteed housing. So we don't ever close the housing application for you all. Um, there's even, uh, we have late admits if you uh, get admitted to Cal Poly later on, we've got a space for you. And then as well as uh, for transfers, if we do have any transfers, that application uh, closes once it's all full. And then, so maybe you're wondering what should you expect when uh, you get into that application? Like, I just wanna reiterate that, I, wait, I think I've answered all the questions, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you're, you. You're, man, that's like, that is, yeah, you're doing a double duty answering questions in the Q&A and, uh, and uh, covering the presentation. Do you wanna just quickly go over, Cindy, okay. a really a popular question that we get about roommates. Uh, what does that yeah. look like? Um, uh, you know, do I have to have a roommate when I complete the housing application? Should, is that expected of me? Should I be nervous about that? Can you maybe a little bit insight on that roommate process and yeah. do most students request the one? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't require that you select any roommates. And I know that other universities have the option to like fill out a form and request like, uh, this is my living habits. We don't have that. Here at Cal Poly, you're in charge of finding your roommate yourself. So ways that students often find their roommates is through Facebook pages. We've got uh, a lot of student run or parent run Facebook pages that uh, have like graduating class of 2020 and you can connect with students that way. And that's how you find them. And on the housing application, in order to request each other as roommates, you're both gonna wanna request each other uh, you just put your Cal po each other's Cal Poly email addresses in the box. It'll give you instructions. And uh, you're also going to want to list, I know in years past we've done it this way, but you're going to want to list your residential learning community preferences. 
uh, in the same order so that you both would list, say you wanna live in the College of Business first, or you wanna live in Mindful Living next and uh, at least have the top three. Awesome, thanks so much for an overview on what yeah. that first year university housing is going to look like. Um, I wanna go over to Melissa to talk about that summer before attending Cal Poly. Um, and I live close to the train station, so I apologize for that if you can hear that in the background. Um, Melissa, let's hear a little bit more about that summer uh, between before you start at Cal Poly. Absolutely, Erin. So um, the summer before you come to Cal Poly and even once you're here, we have a two-part orientation process for all incoming students. Um, the first part is called Slow Days, and Slow Days is a traditionally a two-day retreat where incoming students will uh, have a group and a leader in which you can have intentional conversations about what it means to be a student on Cal Poly's campus. You will uh, be introduced to resources, academic resources, um, health resource, like well, health and well-being resources, uh, as well as activities in getting to meet new students and really start finding your way on Cal Poly's uh, Capitalize in campus. And so for slow days, there is also a supporter track. We have two tracks. It's a supporter track and a student track. A supporter track is really um, meant to help supporters in their transition as well, since their student is leaving off to college. So it's really resources that supporters can use to help their transition and help them support their students' transition. And so as the student track for slow days, uh, briefly went over that, but um, also introduces you to a lot of resources and what it means to be a student um, on, Cal or on Cal Poly's campus. Then, uh, Slow days is traditionally about end of July to the beginning of September, and then you have move-in. And so move-in is um, you as an incoming student moving on to Cal Poly's campus and within your dorm. So we just heard from University Housing. And once you have settled in which dorm or residential um, learning community you will be residing in, you'll choose a slot, a time slot on the day of move-in and you'll be able to move in during that time. There will be volunteers on campus to help you, carts in helping your transition and moving all of your materials and dorm um, style living, kind of any supplies that you need, we will be there to help you check in, help you move in, help move in go smoothly. And then our second part of orientation is WOW, also uh, known as Week of Welcome. And Week of Welcome is really where Cal Poly gets to introduce you and welcome you with open arms to what um, it's like being on our campus and really being a student here. You will be assigned to a group during the Week of Welcome about maybe 10 to 15 other students and two WOW leaders. I was actually Slow Days leader and WOW leader this past summer, so have lots of experience with that and getting to help incoming students. You will really get to kind of continue those intentional conversations that were started during Slow Days regarding, um, you know, healthy lifestyles, um, inclusivity, awareness, as well as registration, um, academic resources, kind of where you can navigate to find your classes and um, where these different resources are located. In addition to all these resources, there's the club fair, there's the resource fair. And um, once you are here, your WOW group has planned tons of activities for all of you to really not just get to know Cal Poly, but to get to know SLO. So, I know for my wow, I was able to go kayaking in Morro Bay, which is just a 10 minute drive from here. I was able to go walking around downtown, which is this quaint downtown in San Luis Obispo, tons of restaurants and shops. And we were able to do lots of activities on campus together as well, which included like painting and um, acoustic nights where we were able to hang out on the lawns and really bond as a group. And so you, this is the time where you get to meet, really get to meet students um, who will be living with you, who may be taking similar classes as you, and getting to know more about San Luis Obispo and WOW. 
What's great about our two-part orientation is that you really get to um, be introduced to all of these resources and have all of these activities without the stress of classes or academics already weighing down on you. So time to be you know, yourself and get to meet new people. Awesome, thanks so much, Melissa. Um, I know Melissa enjoyed being a slow days leader this past uh, summer, and I'm sure that every student that got to work with you was set up for success when they came here at Cal Poly. So without further ado, I'm gonna um, uh, uh, turn the mic over to Jen and Jay, who are two of our Poly Reps University Ambassadors and get to serve as tour guides, uh, virtually as well as in person. So uh, without further ado, we have to present to you students five different kind of myths or what we are calling expectations that oftentimes incoming first year students have and talking a little bit more about the experiences here at Cal Poly. So without further ado, Jen and Jay, it, the floor is yours. Awesome, awesome. I'll be starting us off with the first expectation. So expectation one, my first year of college is always fun and easy and it's the best year. And just to be real, the reality is that nobody tells you this, but college is really hard sometimes. Life transitions are just hard in general. And whether you're a first year student or a transfer student, coming into a new space can oftentimes be difficult. Um, even now during my fourth year, I still find myself feeling this exact way. Homesickness or even just the feeling of wanting to immediately feel at home in a new place is such a real thing. I'm sure we can all relate to. Um, and some resources I'd like to plug are through the Health Center. So through the Health Center on Cal Poly's campus, we get free group, individual, and couples therapy included within our tuition. There are also emotional well-being workshops and crisis numbers that the university provides us. And not to mention a state-of-the-art massage chair. So students get to sign up for free 30 minute appointments here. And pre-COVID, I could definitely be found in that chair twice a week minimum. Um, also for any out of state students in the room, there's a really cool resource that I just found out about called Local Connections. So this program aims to connect out of state Cal Poly students with members of the San Luis Obispo community. My friend Lauren, who is from the East Coast, had to speedily figure out where all her belongings were gonna go when she had to move out of her dorm this past spring due to COVID. And the family that she was actually linked up with through local connections allowed her to store all of her stuff in their garage. So it's super cool how those connections last. Um, but just speaking from my personal experience, I think what helped me the most with the homesick blues during my first year was just leaning into the opportunities that were in front of me. So whether it was an event put on by ASI, and ASI is, it stands for Associated Students Incorporated, um, and that's kind of like our student government equivalent here at Cal Poly. Um, but whether it was going to an event put on by ASI or getting to know the resident advisor in my dorm or getting involved with a club, the more I seized the opportunities that were put in front of me, the more I was able to actually build roots at this university and in this community. Um, and on top of this, there's just so much power in putting your personal experiences into words. Like I look back at my freshman year, and I felt as if so many um, of my friends and myself definitely included in this as well, put a smile on instead of vulnerably, vulnerably sharing about the times that we did feel out of place. I wish I could have told myself to allow others into that because so many other people also felt that way. Awesome, I'm gonna be taking the next expectations if we could hit the next slide. All right, our next expectation is that you will be making your best friend as your roommate. Your roommate's gonna be your best friend. Reality is that may be the case, but oftentimes it's not. I can definitely speak for personal experience. That was not the case for me. And I'm a fourth year, I made it through. It's definitely, you're definitely able to have a good first year experience, Cal Poly experience without that certain scenario. And you may not be friends with your roommate during your first year, but that's totally fine. You can definitely run in separate circles and still come together and have a civil and kind roommate relationship. And if that roommate relationship does sort of circle into something that becomes either unhealthy or just has some problems with it, that's when those resident advisors are really there for you to be a resource. I know my freshman year, um, my few roommates and I, we had some issues that we needed to work out. And that was when our resident advisor sort of was able to come in and facilitate a conversation between us. And it was really healthy to get everything out and we were able to sort of work out a little bit of a solution, a little bit of a compromise. 
So it really isn't the end all be all if you don't have that perfect relationship. I would just really, like Jay said, lean into the resources that you have at your disposal to get those uh, relationships sort of on the right track. But what's also great, and I think Sydney touched on this really well earlier during her housing presentation, is that you have those residential learning communities. So even if you're not best friends or you don't have that best relationship with your roommate, you have your whole community there in your building, on your floor to support you. So for me, I was in the leadership residential learning community. And although I wasn't absolutely best friends with the girls that I was living with at the time, I was able to lean into those in my community. And to this day, I am still really great friends with those people in my building and on my floor. And the fact that we were all bonded through our mutual aspirations towards leadership really allowed us to connect on that level. And all of us are doing awesome things on campus. So I love catching up with them. So no roommate being your best friend is not the end all be all, I assure you. Um, and I think we can go to our next slide. Alrighty, our third expectation or myth is that I'm always going to be on campus or in my dorm room. This is definitely not the case. Um, it's really, really easy to get around and slow. And when you live and learn in a community and a zip code like San Luis Obispo, it's hard to resist not leaving your dorm room or getting outside. Um, Melissa touched on some of the awesome experiences students have during their first week here during the week of welcome, but there's so many more that span beyond that. I'm a fourth year right now and I still have a bucket list of things I haven't even done in slow and I'm going on my fourth year and the time is ticking. So I need to really get a jump start on some of these things. I mean, the photo right there and Melissa touched on it, kayaking in Morro Bay unmatched and that's just a 10 minute drive and that doesn't stop there. It's also really, really great to um, be able to get around even if you don't have a car. So huge misconception is I don't have a car. I'm stuck on campus. What do I do? I didn't have a car my whole first year and I never had an issue. I'll throw it back to WOW. Your two week of welcome leaders are always going to be there as a resource if you ever need a ride. They usually have cars and or have the means to get you a ride. If you need to pick up a prescription, make a run to the grocery store, emergency family trip, whatever, those two wow leaders are there for you beyond that first week. There's also um, zip cars that are available for students and they have specific spots on campus they can park at. Um, and there's also um, a ride share page where students can go to and from San Luis Obispo at whatever rate they please where you can just offer a ride. I think that's more touched on in the next slide as well, but something I will say about activities or things to do off campus is that ASI, our student government, which Jay touched on, Associated Students Incorporated, they throw tons of events all hours all day, so you do not have to feel the need to be stuck in your dorm. Uh, Couple of my favorites, last quarter, it may have been virtual, but I got to Zoom with David Dobrik and that was incredible. And I did that from the comfort of my room, but they also threw lots of outdoor events. There's always something going on in our university union at all hours a day. So there's, I promise you, always something to do. Erin, um, could you go to the next slide? And yeah. Without a car, you will absolutely be fine to explore all of the amazing places that San Luis Obispo has to offer. So our expectation for not being able to go anywhere without a car, 100% not true. Uh, bikes, there's lots of bikes around campus where people can go and set up a bike. You've got that zip car system I talked about and then our Facebook group rideshare. And I think with those three tools, as well as upperclassmen students you might meet, through your resident advisor, your classes, clubs, future involvements that you can lean into, you definitely more than welcome to explore the San Luis community from your very first day here at Cal Poly. Awesome, Erin, if you don't mind going to the last expectation there. And before I get into this one, Jen, I'm so glad that you brought up David Dobrik. Um, that actually reminds me, last week, ASI invited Patrice Coulors, um, who is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, along with George Floyd's aunt and uncle to speak to the Cal Poly body. Um, so just really goes to show what a wide range of topics and events that ASI has. Super fun ones, but also dialogues that are really important. All right, so last expectation, number five. It's going to be hard to find a job and I'm afraid I won't have time. 
So the reality with this is that so many students are employed by Cal Poly and have the opportunity to work on campus. So Cal Poly Corporation, which includes campus dining and the bookstore, um, actually employs the largest number of students on campus. And then ASI, which we've obviously referenced, employs the second largest amount. And once you get to Cal Poly, if you log on to your student portal, which is basically like where you can access your classes, on the left-hand side, the, the fifth icon down is this thing called Mustang Jobs. And if you click on it, there is just a huge plethora um, of on and off campus jobs right in front of you. Um, during my freshman year, my friend Trevor worked at 805 Kitchen, which is the campus cafeteria we have here at Poly. My other friend, Angela, worked as someone who raised money for Cal Poly's phone-a-thon. My sister, Cara, who actually went to Cal Poly too, um, worked at the on-campus Starbucks. Someone from my major worked as a teacher's assistant. And you can also find jobs that are more directly related to your major. So for example, my friend, Abby, who's a food science major, scored a job at the on-campus creamery. So she was constantly getting the free ice cream. Truly a lucky gal. Um, but all that to say, there are so many options for jobs during your first year here at Cal Poly. And I hope that by Jen and I talking that this kind of broke down some expectations for real or versus reality for all of y'all. So without further ado, um, we're gonna transition now to talk a little bit more about university advising. So up first is going to be um, uh, the Mustang Success Center. And that's gonna be a Mariah speaking about experiences in university advising, specifically to start with Mustang Success Center. So from there, we'll shift gears and talk about career services. And lastly, I'll, I wanna plug that we do have some incredible resources for any type of student that might come into Cal Poly, specifically out of our student academic services that often serve students that might be first generation or historically low income or underserved populations at Cal Poly, there are even additional resources for students like that. And if you're completing the application this fall, I highly encourage you if you are a first gen or um, uh, under a uh, uh, first gen student or come from a underserved background, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to apply for educational opportunity program that is located on your Cal State Apply application. So without further ado, I'll throw it on over to Mariah. All right. Thanks, Erin. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I um, am a peer advisor at the Mustang Success Center, and I actually got this job through Mustang Jobs um, as well. So it is definitely possible um, to get a job on campus. So transitioning now into academic advising, um, if you're anything like me, you have a lot of questions probably about college in general and just how big of a transition it is. Um, so luckily, Cal Poly has a lot of resources to help you um, succeed, not only academically, but also um, in a more personal matter as well. Um, it can be a little bit hard to kind of parse through all of the resources that are available. Um, so I'm just going to give you kind of a quick breakdown. So your first year, um, you will meet with the Mustang, Mustang Success Center, or a center that meets with um, all first years of all um, majors. And you actually, the really nice thing is you don't have to schedule an appointment. So we actually work on a drop-in basis only. So anytime you have questions, big or small, you're always welcome to come in. Um, and you're actually also not assigned an advisor for your first year. So just in that first bullet point there, um, you're welcome to meet with any one of our advisors. Um, if you have questions about let's see, like class schedules, transfer credit, registration, tutoring, study tips, all of that. We want you to bring it to us. And if we don't know the answer to your question, we will always know who to direct you to. Um, and then moving on into your second year and beyond, we'll have you actually meet with your college advising center. Um, and your college advising center is um, the advising that's specific to your college. So let me explain this college term really quickly. We have six colleges within Cal Poly. Um, and each of them uh, house different majors within the college. So I, my, name, my major is kinesiology, so I'm part of the College of Science and Math. Um, so I would go to that specific advising center for more information on um, any questions that I might have after my second year and beyond. Um, other advising services that you will be able to see are uh, faculty advisors who are basically just your professors that are assigned to you and you can ask them about selecting courses that align with your career goals, internships, how they got into the field, things like that. We also have pre-health advising. So for all of you, maybe pre-med or um, therapy or any, anything related to health, um, they are gonna be your go-to in terms of applying. 
um, picking the right profession. Um, well, that's more career services, but um, advising, pre-health advising will help you to get there once you've chosen. Um, and then, as Erin mentioned, there are so many other campus resources um, from athletics to the Center for Military Connected Students, multicultural offices like the Dream Center and the Cross-Cultural Centers. They're all super great resources. Um, your first year, you will receive a block schedule. So um, if someone could actually drop the link to block schedules at Cal Poly, um, that means that you are actually assigned to classes. So that kind of takes the pressure off of regis registering in classes for your first year um, for you. And in terms of change of major, I know I've been seeing this question, um, but it is definitely possible to change your major if you need to. So I know you have to commit when you come to Cal Poly and maybe that's a little bit scary because I mean, you're only like what, 17? And you have to decide what you wanna do for the next four years. I don't know, that was kind of scary for me. Um, and actually a little story, one of my friends almost didn't apply to Cal Poly because she just didn't want to commit to a major. Um, long story short, short, she actually is a third year at Cal Poly now um, in a major that she absolutely loves, not one that she applied or that she got admitted to, um, but she's very happy there and actually is going to graduate, I think a year early. So she's really um, killing the game. But yeah, so it's, it's definitely possible. Don't be discouraged. Um, however, it is a process that you begin once you're at Cal Poly. Um, so you have to wait your first quarter just to kind of transition into things and get um, some experience under your belt, and then you can begin that process. Um, and of course, please come see us. We can help you kind of walk through that process and also um, what that would look like. In terms of minors and concentrations and all that, um, a minor, actually, I'll start with a concentration. So your concentration allows you to focus on a more specific field of study within your major. So for example, I'm a kinesiology major um, and my concentration, which is within my major, is exercise science. There are also concentrations like sports science and health promotion that just allow um, students to kind of hone in on one subject or discipline that they're really interested in. And your faculty advisor, um, like I mentioned earlier, would be a great resource to talk about um, concentrations with in the future. Minors are a little bit different. Um, so they allow you to explore a different or possibly related field of study that's not your major um, without having to take all of the normal courses to maybe even declare like a double major. So um, we've got about 89 uh, minors to choose from. Um, so if you're interested in pursuing that, you will definitely find something that you're interested in. I personally am a psychology minor, which is actually pretty common at Cal Poly. Um, and I chose it because I'm interested in psychology and kind of the implications that it has on my daily life and then also my future career. Um, but I don't necessarily want this to be my whole major. It's just something that I'm really interested in. Um, and then if you have any questions about double majors, that process looks a little bit different for each major. There's no one way that you can declare um, or take on another, another major. So I would recommend that once you're at Cal Poly and you're thinking about doing that, definitely come in. We will be more than happy to talk to you about anything, um, not just double majors. But I think the next slide will show us the advising.calpoly.edu website, perfect. I would highly recommend that you take a look at this if you have any questions. Um, it is a very, very helpful resource for you. And as always, if you guys have any questions when you get here, we are so excited to meet with you and work with you to make sure that you have the best experience at Cal Poly. Thanks so much, Mariah. That was um, some great information. And Mariah hit on really often a very popular a question that we've gotten um, a couple different times today is, do I have to minor in this? Do I have to minor? And the answer is no. But do I have to minor in the same college that I choose a major in? And since Mariah is a kinesiology major, that's in the College of Science and Mathematics. And the minor of psychology that she picked up is the major in the College of Liberal Arts. So clearly, you don't have to. Uh, you could be a dairy science minor uh, major with a packaging minor because, you know, maybe you want to learn how to better package milk and dairy products. So there's so many different opportunities at Cal Poly. Without further ado, let's introduce Nathan to talk a bit more about career services. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Nathan, and I'm representative uh, ambassador for career services here at Cal Poly. 
So uh, as you might know already that Cal Poly does require you to declare your major prior to coming or when you're applying for Cal Poly. Um, and this does lead to some stress for some students. Um, some students are unsure as to what they want to do as we were touching on earlier. Um, but just know that Career Services is here for you. On our website at Career Services, um, Cal Poly Career Services, um, there's a student resource toolkit and this will become your friend while you're at Cal Poly and even before you're at Cal Poly. Um, on there is a website called What Can I Do With This Major? And so if you're trying to explore what major you might be interested at in applying for, you can go on there now and just start looking at different majors that Cal Poly has and see what you might be able to do with that major. And um, this is a really useful tool that some people use once they're here as well, when they're thinking about that change of major process as well as before they come here. Um, at Career Services, we do have a freshman focus team. And this consists of three career counselors that are here dedicated to serve the freshmen. Um, so they will help uh, freshmen explore their VIPs, which is which stands for values, interests, personality, and strengths to find that right major, as well as uh, discover a wide range of career possibilities and develop your professional skills, such as your resume, networking, and interviewing. Um, as uh, I believe it was Mariah, um, she was talking about the term the uh, term college. Career Services also has a college specialist for each uh, college, and they are there to serve that college um, in more specific needs as to what you can do within that college. Um, so at Career Services, we do highly recommend students get involved. And right now, this looks a little bit different in the virtual environment, but clubs are still absolutely a thing, and um, the events are all still happening. So. We highly recommend that students get involved and join clubs, participate in service learning projects, leadership through Greek life, et cetera. Um, and if you are to come to Cal Poly, we do have uh, enrolled students are uh, able to utilize Mustang jobs as that was uh, linked in the chat a little bit earlier. Uh, and this is where students can find on-campus jobs, uh, jobs helping community members in the slow area uh, they can find internships as well as eventually full-time positions and this becomes a very useful tool for students while they're at Cal Poly. Um, on the next slide uh, we do talk about the graduate status report. This uh, here's the QR code for it as well as the link and uh, the career services uh, polls every graduating senior at the end of their time here at Cal Poly to learn what jobs they've secured. Uh, including the company, job titles, salary, et cetera. And all of that information can be found here while you're even uh, applying for um, Cal Poly. You can go ahead and see where students end up in that major after they have uh, graduated. Awesome, thank you so much, Nathan. Um, one last piece that I wanna go over y'all before we open it up for questions is if, you, if you're sitting here uh, attending this presentation, you're thinking, oh gosh, what major am I interested in? Check out our Cal Poly admissions website or our undergraduate education page here. Uh, this, this even this, this uh, explore your major tool set this is living right on our admissions homepage as well. This is a great resource for you to understand, okay, Goodness, I've, you know, since I was five years old, I've always wanted to become a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer. So what major at Cal Poly could I choose? Or you might not necessarily have a career path or particular uh, path forward that you're thinking, but maybe you have an interest in studying, say, sustainability. So what major can I choose at Cal Poly that might showcase those different opportunities. Thanks for my, uh, thanks Anna. Anna, my colleague just posted our uh, Explorer Majors tool set. So check out that chat. That's a really cool resource. Um, and then last but not least, before we get uh, to our questions here, if you do have any interest in signing up for our next webinar series, you're welcome to continue to sign up. I know a lot of you have already signed up for webinars. They're going to be happening every Wednesday um, except, oh gosh, Veterans Day falls on a Wednesday in November. So we're going to host one on that one on Friday of that week. But every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to be hosting a different specific um, uh, session focused on a specific topic uh, that a lot of our students, uh, our prospective students have an interest in. So I'm really excited about next week. So you'll actually see me again next week. We're going to be talking about life in San Luis Obispo. So a little bit more of that experience, um, getting, becoming a resident and a, a community member on the Central Coast. 
But without further ado, let's kind of talk a little bit more about um, some of the questions that we've gotten thus far. And my first question is going to go to uh, Melissa and Jay. Melissa and Jay, my first question is going to go to you. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit about uh, that upside down or blended curriculum that is so so familiar with the Cal Poly experience. This is a term students that we often use here at Cal Poly. And we talked a little bit about this early on in our presentation, that because each of you do have a major, you're gonna come in and start taking classes on what Mariah called a block schedule. So what does that look like of taking classes your very, very first year? Let's go, Jen and, um, who did I say? Jen and Jay, um, and then maybe Mariah, you could also talk about the block schedule as well. Awesome, yeah, so I'm really glad Aaron brought this up um, because I know as Nathan talked about, it can be kind of nerve wracking to apply to a school, um, having to declare your major before. I know for me, I really wasn't sure of what I wanted to do. Um, so I kind of went on a whim and picked sociology and it ended up working out. But the really awesome thing was that starting my fall quarter, my first year, I was blocked into classes that are major classes. So I had a blend of general education classes along with major classes. So from the get-go, I was able to see that sociology would be a very great fit versus going to another university where maybe I wouldn't be able to see what sociology is actually made of until my third or fourth year. So I'm really grateful to go to a school where I was exposed to sociology and the learn by doing um, learning philosophy that Cal Poly has from day one. Awesome. I can also take this question. I also picked business administration on a whim. I'm here as a fourth year. It worked out for the best. But something that was discussed too is the idea of concentrations. So although I am a business administration student, by the end of my second year, I did have to declare concentration. So something really cool that sort of speaks to that upside down blended curriculum is the process you go through sort of to decide how you wanna, which concentration you wanna decide on. So for me, I like to refer to it as sort of shopping around. So business majors, you have a class your first year in kind of each of those different categories. And so you're able to kind of see like what works, what doesn't, and you're doing those that hands on work in each of those areas. And so through that, I was able to decide that which concentrations that I wanted to do for myself. I'd like to add a little bit um, more on the change of major piece. I see we just got a question about starting all over. Um, a lot of times students come in and they kind of know like, okay, I want to change my major, but you know, you're blocked into classes that are you know, starting to get into major courses. Uh, the good news is, uh, no, it's not like starting all over because you're also blocked into GE courses. Um, if you come in and you know, okay, I really wanna change my major, I, I don't think that this is a fit for me, uh, then we can work with you to just take maybe GE courses in your first quarter so that you're not kind of making progress towards a major that you don't actually um, want to stay in. So it's not an end all be all if you, choose the wrong major, um, but yeah, so just take comfort in the fact that uh, we will always be here to support you and try to find the best way um, for you to make progress in your degree and not have to graduate late. So don't worry too much about it. Awesome, thanks so much. So our next question, um, oh, I totally forgot to mention, I was a political science major my first year and I was actually block scheduled into three political science classes my very first day at Cal Poly. So I absolutely loved that opportunity. So let's talk about our next question. Um, and that question is, is Cal Poly more a residential campus or like, is it more of a commuter campus? Do students, more students live in the San Luis Obispo area or do they like commute, you know, 30 minutes onto campus and then leave at the night? Um, and then, you know, do most students come from the San Luis Obispo area or outside of San Luis? Bispo. And so um, that question is going to go to Melissa and Sydney. I do want to, I totally forgot to mention to you all, we often say slow for short. That means San Luis Obispo. Um, so we often like to say slow for short. Um, so Melissa and Sydney, what's, is it commuter? Is it residential? What's the Cal Poly community and like? Yeah, I can totally talk about the housing side of everything. So housing, we actually house about over 9,000 students on campus, is, which is one of the largest numbers of uh, students living on campus than uh, every other uh, uh, public California university. And so 
a lot of those students are coming from uh, California, but I definitely have met my fair share of out of state or even international students living here. I definitely feel like it's not a commuter campus, in my opinion. I would agree with Sydney, um, especially with um, like living in the residential community on campus and getting to like meet a lot of other first years and uh, older students. I've come to realize that a lot of students like live within SLO once they've settled here and it's definitely more of a residential campus. But I also have met my fair share of, especially this year as I was a transfer WOW leader, um, I've met many transfers who do commute from the neighboring uh, towns and cities of San Luis Obispo. Um, and so I would say it is a resi residential campus, but that's necessarily not applicable, necessarily applicable to everybody. There are a lot of people who do commute um, outside of SLO to campus as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I also wanted to clarify earlier, I made uh, the statement. So first years, when you're filling out your housing application, there's an initial payment of 1,500. So 1,000 goes towards dining and the 500 goes towards your housing. And then transfers, uh, you know, I know, I'm not sure if transfers are with us right now, but housing is optional for transfers. Uh, you don't have to, you can choose to live in the surrounding slow area if you wish and commute. Um, but that would be an initial payment of 500 for transfers. You can choose to do a dining plan. It's optional for transfers, but for first years, the dining plan is required. And dining is quite amazing at Cal Poly. I wish we could all be at our brand new Vista Grande dining pavilion. We just opened this, I think it was over $30 million dining complex with so many new kitchens. There might be students on the call that have certain allergens or dietary restrictions. We even have a separate kitchen um, for the 10 most common allergens or restrictions where our, or that food and that pr um, prep, that food prep is actually done remotely. And so that's some really cool stuff. Um, I hear the bomb me uh, sandwich is pretty good. So I need to go out and check out um, some of this new stuff. And then also Jamba. Jamba. Do y'all know that Jamba Juice is rebranding to Jamba? So blew my mind. Uh, Jamba is on the first floor of that new pavilion. So um, our last, one of our last questions and students still, you know, type any questions away. We're, we're still taking questions. But another question that we have is actually going to go back to Jay and Melissa. Um, what are office hours like? And you know, I think there's that big kind of myth or nervousness um, entering college about faculty. Are they intimidating? Uh, what is meeting faculty like? Um, are they approachable? So Jay and uh, Melissa, can you talk about office hours? What does that even mean? And uh, kind of interacting with faculty during the first year. Absolutely. So I was super nervous coming into college that I was just going to have all lecture halls because that's totally what I pictured university to be like. Um, but I definitely have to plug this that Cal Poly has a 33 size class average. So very similar to what my high school classrooms looked like. Um, there's also an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, but what office hours are is basically a time during the week that teachers have to be in their office with the door wide open for students convenience. So literally for anything, if students want to come in and talk about life or if students want to come in before midterm and ask questions, this is a designated time where the teacher has to be available to answer those questions. And it's super cool because my first year I lived in the business residential learning community, even though I'm not in the College of Business. And there would be professors come in and actually host office hours and review sessions in the dorm itself. So it's really cool how there's integration between the dorm and office hours. Yeah, absolutely. To build off of what Jay um, mentioned, I was also a little nervous coming in. I was a little intimidated. Uh, by my professors, especially going to ask for help. But I've come to realize that um, professors are really here to support you. And more than being your professor, they want to be your friend. And so even going into office hours, if you don't have an academic related question, but just getting to know your professor, it really benefits um, that relationship building. And you may never know that professor, it may be in charge of a research project, may be looking for interns, may have opportunities for you to get involved outside of the classroom um, in your 
major or career wise. And so creating those relationships is really, really a great way to kind of look further down the road of what you want to do. And I know that I had a professor my first year that um, I didn't necessarily like have a question, but before like every midterm, I would go in and I would just talk it out with my professor and a few other students. And she would really like go in depth about some of the questions that would be on the midterm, some of the like written response questions that if I hadn't gone to that office hours, I wouldn't have been as prepared, even when I didn't have a question about what we were learning. And so I would highly recommend office hours just to get to know your professor, make those relationships, but also to help you academic wise and get those questions answered. That's that's valuable information. Office hours can sometimes get you a big tip or trick on your exams. So I love that, Melissa. Um, we just got a great question in the Q&A, and that is uh, after your freshman year, after your first year, if you live off campus or enter into the apartments on campus, uh, do you still have to have a meal plan or can you have a meal plan? And I just want to let you know, after your first year of living on campus in our traditional halls, um, you do not need, you are not required to have a meal plan after your first year, but it is an option and a lot of students do take that option, but most of our students do choose to not continue with um, the same type of meal plan that a, that first year student would have. Um, our next question is going to go to Mariah, and then also Mariah, I'd be happy to help you out if you if uh, with this question as well. And that is, uh, do most students graduate in four years? Um, are there majors that are five year graduation? What, what's that like? Um, you know, maybe talk for, about that from the, the advising standpoint as well. Yeah, so our goal is to get almost all the majors out in four years. Um, there are special programs, so I believe uh, architecture and landscape architecture are two of the programs that are designed to be five-year programs. Um, so those are the only ones where it's expected that, you know, you graduate in five years, but then you're ready to go into the field and um, take whatever certifying test you need. Um, but for the other majors, the goal is, yes, four years, and it's very, it's, pretty common actually um, and some people actually graduate early depending on what kind of transfer credit they bring in um, but uh, it is also not uncommon for people to take an extra quarter or two quarters depending on if they change their major or they double majored or something like that um, but the target goal is four years for most majors awesome thanks so much um, we just got a great question um, oh about the graduation rate 80 percent I think it's right now 79 percent of our students graduate in five years. Um, so, which is actually, is quite remarkable and is, is much higher students than the national average. And we just got another great question. What is the retention rate? So that means the number of students that show up for their second year of study that started their first year. Um, and that is 94%. And that is exceptionally high. Uh, one of our last questions is gonna go over to Sydney to talk a little bit about housing. Um, and that is, and this, this question popped into our, our Q&A, is there apartment style housing options for incoming freshmen? Or are those options just restricted to second years and higher? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now, uh, because of COVID, we have uh, housing rearranged a little bit differently. So I'll talk about now versus in years prior. Uh, so in years prior, what we've had is students living as first years just in our dorms. So that would be Sierra Madre, Yosemite, Yakitutu, uh, the South Mountain Halls, and North Mountain, and then our continuing students. We also had the option of first years that would live in the Cerro Vista apartments, um, as well as this would also be the continuing student housing transfer student housing, um, as well as um, extended housing options for if you're a graduate as well too. And then in Poly Canyon Village apartments, we've also had student groups a part of every, um, so every student group uh, as well. So first years are mostly just in the first year dorms. And then you have some options, but we try to keep you in the first year dorms. And then um, everyone after that, if you're a continuing student, a transfer or grad, you would be in the apartments. Does that make sense? Is that clarifying enough? I think so. I think, okay. yeah, you know, with COVID, so much is up for change, Sydney. This yeah, day. yeah, with uh, COVID, but, yeah. You know, had, go yeah. ahead. 
Uh, what, uh, and then someone asked a clarion frying question. Which dorms are for first year students again? So we actually have a link to for the resident halls and apartments. Um, maybe we can, I can drop that in the chat. And you can actually take a look at them. Panelists and attendees. And so it lists the student groups that typically live in all of the uh, housing and what the housing looks like. It gives floor plans, layouts of uh, what furniture is included and all the amenities as well. Hey, that, you know, that microwave and that mini fridge are super duper important. I mm -hmm. lived off of yogurts freshman year. Um, so that is super important. So with that, I don't know why I'm ending on what I ate for breakfast freshman year, but um, thank you so much for all of you all that uh, joined us here today. That's all that we have. And I would encourage you to um, use your phone or a device to uh, continue to sign up for the fall webinar series. Um, and um, that is uh, accessible to you all. Uh, each week for the incoming uh, for the next couple actually between now and December 2nd. Thanks Anna for putting that link in the uh, in our presentation and thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you so much for the valuable information that you shared with uh, prospective students and sharing your Cal Poly knowledge and insight. So thank you so much students for joining us here today. Uh, we wish you the best with the application process. Go ahead and uh, I would encourage you to sign up for tours. I would encourage you to sign up for more of these webinars we also have some uh, some great on-demand tours. Uh, someone was asking about the rec center or housing or uh, exploring concentrations and minors. Our YouTube page, uh, which someone can drop in the chat right now, is an absolute uh, phenomenal resource for you to better understand the different programs, majors, and experiences at Cal Poly. Encourage you to check that out. And then also check out our virtual tours and our application um, workshops or application Q&A sessions that are happening now and through through uh, December. So wish you all the best. Thanks so much. And uh, we hope to see you on campus here uh, sometime soon. Thanks so much.